Welcome back to my course on genome editing and engineering. We are discussing about genome engineered disease models and in uh, part A we have discussed the basics and importance of animal models and this is a continuation of that uh, lecture. As long as uh, nine, in 1974 Janice and Minch uh, you can see here published this paper in uh, PNS. Uh, they were the first to uh, create uh, mice with uh, transients and uh, these are some of the pictures of uh, those transgenic uh, mice and as well as uh, Beatrice Means and uh, Rudolf uh, Janis. Uh, uh, however, the mice uh, they developed could not pass the transient to their offspring. Uh, the impact and the applicability of this experiment were however huge in uh, spite of this uh, limitation. Uh, however, at the time the word transgenic was not known, it was uh, coined in 1981 by J. W. Gordon and F. H. Ruddle who successfully incorporated the foreign gene in the host chromosomal DNA and demonstrated the Mendelian distribution up to two succeeding generations of uh, progeny unlike in this uh, earlier case. Many years later in 2013 uh, Rudolf uh, Janis again led a team uh, and he was the first to develop gene knockout mouse uh, using CRISPR uh, Cas9 and this uh, paper uh, you can see uh, in uh, cell where he reports about a single step generation of mice carrying mutations in multiple genes by CRISPR Cas mediated uh, genome engineering. Wang and uh, co workers uh, injected TET1 and TET2 single guide RNA with Cas9 mRNA into zygotes, resulting in the production of mice that carried up to 80 percent mutations in both these genes. And, uh, this was the first ever demonstration of using CRISPR Cas system uh, for one step generation of animals carrying mutations in multiple genes. One of the important thing that is impo uh, uh, critical uh, in animal transgenesis and genome editing is the delivery methods. Uh, by this time you know about many delivery methods we have discussed in the past uh, lectures. Uh, however, we can uh, develop them into uh, the following uh, three categories uh, like uh, ex vivo approaches and you have under them uh, various methods like pro-nuclear injection, viral vectors, receptor mediated uptake, in vitro electroporation, liposomal transfection, blastocyte uh, micro injection, then sperm mediated gene transfer. and uh, intracytoplasmic sperm injection mediated uh, gene transfer and uh, you can see here uh, where they are used. Uh, for example, pro nuclear injection uh, it is the most commonly used method followed by thousands of labs for over uh, 3 decades. Viral vectors are used by a few because it has limited success and receptor mediated uptake uh, in the year this paper was compiled I had only uh, one source report and uh, novel approach uh, uh, electroporation was reported to be a novel approach uh, at that time and also proven using uh, in the CRISPR Cas system. Uh, whatever uh, uh, progress has been made uh, you can see here the germline transmission potential. Uh, in certain cases it is very high, in certain cases it is very low and in certain cases uh, data or proof is uh, yet to come. So, another category of nucleic acid delivery is the in vivo delivery to pre implantation embryos, fetuses and uh, ovarian tissues. So, here uh, one of the method is the gonad we are going to discuss about it then transplacental gene delivery to a uh, fetuses then uh, delivery to fetal tissues uh, in utero in vivo delivery to ovarian tissues and uh, you can see here uh, in the remarks column 
gonad not proven yet but highly uh, likely to be uh, favorable uh, in other cases they are range from low to uh, very low then the third um, uh, category is in vivo delivery to male gonadal uh, tissues and here uh, testis mediated gene transfer method the seminiferous tubule mediated gene made delivery and gene delivery via bus difference are adopted and uh, here you can see a schematic of uh, some of the uh, methods for knockout and knock in in transgenic mice generation here only the methods that have potential for generating germline transmission offspring are uh, shown uh, for details of all these methods uh, you can uh, visit uh, sato et al uh, biology direct uh, volume 11 article 16 published in uh, 2016 from where this a uh, figure has been uh, adapted so here you can see the number 1 or a uh, the classical method that require micro injection and these are shown in the uh, inner circle and uh, crispr system can generate knockout knock in models directly through uh, pi and therefore can uh, bypass the use of uh, embryonic stem cells uh, in uh, this zone you have the approaches uh, which do not require micro injection uh, and uh, they do not require ex vivo handling of the embryos for example here you have in vitro electroporation liposomal transfection receptor mediated uptake then viral vectors in vivo delivery to ovaries uh, and so on in the third uh, approach lies the gonad method that does not require both micro injection and ex vivo handling of embryos which are uh, listed in this uh, outer uh, circle let us uh, look into the crispr based mouse modeling methods using uh, micro injection so here you see uh, crispr delivery to zygote embryos uh, using micro injection uh, or electro operation uh, edited two cell stage embryos are transplanted uh, into a surrogate mouse and the edited offsprings are uh, obtained this is the crispr based mouse modeling method which uses uh, gonad uh, this is genome editing via oviductal nucleic acid delivery and this is a new method of introduction of the cas9 guide rna complex into embryos direct injection of the cas9 gRNA complex for genome editing into oviduct or pregnant mouse uh, is done followed by an uh, electrical impulse as you can uh, see over here after which uh, there is recovery and BART which results to edited mice uh, progeny and here you can see uh, some chimeras uh, as well this table gives us some idea about the generation and treatment of animal models of human diseases using uh, genome editing methods and the various species that are used uh, this tells us about the generation of disease animal models uh, here are the species like mouse rat pig monkey dog and rabbit and uh, certain genes are being targeted to create the disease model i will not go into details of these genes uh, but uh, that particular gene will depend on the type of disease for which we are trying to uh, create the disease model for example in uh, duchenne muscular dystrophy our target is uh, dystrophin and for osteoporosis our target is atp 6 b 1 h and then you have notch tree for lateral uh, meningocele syndrome similarly in rat we are trying to target the hunting team 
uh, for creating a disease model for Huntington disease or Parkin and pink one for creating a disease model of Parkinson's disease and uh, so on and uh, so forth uh, as you can see in this uh, table. Now for uh, uh, creating this uh, disease uh, model the delivery mode is also very very important. In the majority of cases you can see micro injection is used but in certain cases we also have uh, electroporation or intratracheal injection and other techniques like somatic cell uh, nuclear uh, transfer as well and here are the uh, editing methods you use here uh, streptococcus pyrogenes cas9 or sp cas9 in the majority of uh, cases but in certain cases for Duchenne muscular dystrophy uh, we are using cytidine uh, based uh, editor and uh, uh, those who are interested for uh, further details about these disease models and the techniques and the editing methods you can visit these uh, references which are available uh, in Lee et al 2020 animal cells and systems volume uh, 4 24 uh, and, uh, issue 1 and page number 8 to uh, 16. This is a continuation of the earlier table where we are having some details on the treatment of uh, disease uh, models and you can see here similarly the species mouse rat dog and pig and the target gene over here f8 9 and dystrobin and the corresponding diseases and here is the technique uh, which is briefly described over here in case of mouse target gene F8, disease hemophilia A, uh, the technique uses patient derived IPSCs correction and uh, transplantation and in majority of cases you have intravenous injection or intramuscular uh, injection or in certain cases you have subretinal and retinal injection uh, and, and intramuscular uh, and also uh, micro uh, injections and the editing method mostly dominated by SP castine and in certain cases we have uh, the plasmids or uh, the AVs or in certain cases even RNP with gold nanoparticle uh, has been uh, deployed. Let us now discuss uh, a little bit uh, something different from the earlier uh, concepts. So, this is a famous novel by George Orwell called Animal Farm. Basically, it is a satirical allegorical novella and uh, this book tells the story of a group of farm animals who rebel against uh, their human owner farmer and hoping to create a society where the animals can be equal, uh, free and happy. And uh, at the end of this novel, you will find that many of these pigs uh, started becoming like their human farmer and they even started uh, behaving uh, whether in terms of dressing, uh, eating and even social behavior uh, more like uh, humans. Uh, so, this is one of the famous uh, uh, quotes in the book, all animals are equal but some animals are more equal uh, than others. So, the whole idea of uh, uh, taking you to the story framework of this particular uh, novel is that the idea about humanization of uh, animals. I mean, uh, whether there are techniques to convert an animal uh, into a humans, uh, which has been, uh, of course, used in a very satirical way by uh, George Orwell, the answer is uh, possible. So, uh, we are having interest in humanized animals uh, from the point of view of animal disease models. So, we know that animals are not exact replica of humans and we also know about many of the human uh, 
and animal genes are similar, similar but not exactly uh, 100 percent same. So, if we can uh, transform those uh, genes in the hu uh, animals uh, to be more like human by changing the sequences, uh, we may be having better animal uh, models. So, here you can see that uh, laboratories have resorted to developing simpler and effective models, especially transgenic animal models that mimic human responses to study and understand various aspects of infectious agents, pathogenesis, disease progression, nature of protective immunity and uh, vaccine development. The modification of the mouse genome, the mouse with its uh, short regeneration time and comparatively low maintenance and production cost uh, is a perfect mammal for probing the genome to understand its functions and complexities and it is being used uh, for improved understanding of human health uh, and disease for which researchers have created a wide variety of mouse models that carry uh, human DNA. The advances in genome engineering make possible targeted replacement of mouse genomic sequences with human orthologous DNA. This capability ranges from finely tuned humanization of individual nucleotides and amino acids to the incorporation of many megabases of human DNA. Uh, we will examine the emerging technologies for targeted genomic humanization of a mouse genome and discuss the spectrum of existing genomically humanized mouse models and the insights such models have provided and consider the lessons learned for designing such models uh, in uh, uh, future. Let us examine some of the humanization uh, procedures which are being used in uh, various mouse strains for the development of humanized uh, mice models for application in personalized uh, cancer uh, therapy. The first one is the subletal dose irradiation and uh, human cell uh, injection. Uh, CD34 plus human hematopoietic stem cells from bone marrow, uh, umbilical cord or cordless uh, mononuclear cells are utilized for creating these kind of uh, models. Uh, in the second approach, uh, there is a direct injection uh, of the peripheral blood mononuclear uh, cells and in the third approach, uh, they use the genetic engineering to knock in uh, human genes like uh, IL-3, MCF, ZMMCF, CSF, uh, thrombopoietin, uh, uh, etc. Uh, or to knock out genes responsible for major histocompatibility complex class 1 and class 2 or molecules. The next step involves human tissue engraftment using microsurgery technique. Normally the humanization procedure takes around 4 to 8 weeks until uh, validation. Uh, humanized animal models are explored uh, to get predictive results uh, regarding cancer therapy and can also be integrated into uh, co-clinical trials. So, this figure uh, is adapted from this Diagnostics 2020, uh, 10, 9, page 660. Uh, for further details about these uh, procedures, uh, you can uh, refer to this paper by Onasiu. This table gives us an idea about the partial and smaller scale genomically uh, humanized mice created for different uh, investigations. Uh, here uh, we have the human gene locus and uh, the partial humanization. Uh, you can see the IGK, IGK constant region and uh, this is associated with the antibodies with human uh, immunoglobin kappa constant region. Here is another candidate like FOXP2. This is the humanization of two human specific residues and then APP is the humanizing three residues in A beta domain plus human uh, mutations related to Alzheimer's disease. Similarly, we have APOE uh, which is the humanization of uh, 
uh, one residue critical to human APOE for biochemistry for Alzheimer's and uh, cardiovascular diseases. Similarly, we have uh, BDNF, uh, which is the modeling of two human uh, variant residues connected to uh, psychiatric uh, disorders. Overall, we can see a large uh, uh, number of researchers are working in the area of uh, partial or small scale uh, humanization of the uh, mice genome, uh, whereby human uh, genes are uh, tried to be uh, tried to be cloned. And uh, we have many other such uh, candidates like uh, HTT, uh, TNFS11 and FAS and ICAP and uh, so on. Uh, we also have some uh, people working in humanizing the non-coding uh, variants where you see this EQTL uh, RS2277862 uh, and uh, it is used to model lipid functional non-coding uh, human uh, variants. And in majority of these uh, cases you can see the technology that is being used uh, mostly HR in uh, embryonic uh, stem cells and in uh, this case we are using CRISPR Cas9 assisted uh, HR in the uh, gigots. And uh, there are many such whole gene and uh, large scale genomically humanized mice created for different uh, investigations as well uh, with various human gene uh, locus and uh, different technologies uh, has been used for this like HRN uh, ES cells or SSODN mediated end joining in uh, red zygotes or CRISPR Cas9 assisted HRN ES cells or both HRN RMC in ES cells. So, overall today we have uh, many developments uh, using uh, homologous recombination as well as CRISPR-Cas9 uh, for the humanization of a mice uh, uh, genome. And there, these are some of the uh, additional uh, information uh, in this uh, progress. Compared to the large number of classic transgenic mouse strains that mostly carry human DNA as randomly inserted multi-copy transgenes, the number of targeted genomically humanized mouse strains is uh, less as we can see in the earlier tables. Uh, the latter are designed to have greater physiological relevance than their classic transgenic uh, counterparts. As they maintain the correct genomic context of a gene of interest to preserve physiological expression levels and correct spatiotemporal expression patterns, the translated protein is expected to display the unique biochemical properties of the human gene including potentially unique deleterious properties uh, when mutated. When non-coding human sequences are incorporated, human specific regulations and human gene splice isoforms may be maintained. So, today we have the technology, uh, not only the classical transgenic technologies of random insertion of uh, human genes into mice genome or other animals, which may be pig as well. Uh, we also deploy the genome editing technologies for humanizing uh, mouse or uh, animal models. Uh, now, a, a question may arise, uh, how much to humanize? Uh, if we transfer all the human genes and uh, maybe soon in the future also the non-coding uh, sequences, uh, would there be some kind of a catastrophe like that mentioned in animal farms by George Orwell, the pigs becoming almost uh, like uh, humans and uh, if some kind of ethical problems may arise because we have humanized the mouse uh, too much. Uh, these are all hypothetical uh, questions and there are no any direct answers uh, to these uh, in, 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 uh, in the current time. Uh, this is a term called uh, anthropomorphism. Uh, 
this is the attribution of human characteristics and qualities uh, to deities, objects and or animals. So, uh, our humanization of the mice may uh, result in uh, some opportunity or challenge or disadvantage of this uh, nature. Anyway, let us uh, try to find out what are the different kinds of humanization uh, that is uh, uh, technically uh, available or feasible as of now. Uh, we have uh, discussed in table 1 and table 2 about some partial and whole um, humanization. So, uh, we have uh, the technologies for partial humanization. So, here you have a mouse uh, gene of interest and you can see here a ATZ sequence and you have here a uh, stop sequence and then you have fine scale residue where you are doing the humanization and uh, we may also go for a full uh, domain uh, humanization uh, over here. So, a summary of considerations when deciding on the ex extent of targeted uh, genomic humanization for a given gene of interest. Uh, the dark green boxes uh, represent the exons, lines between exons are uh, introns, light green boxes are UTRs and blue regions uh, represent the humanization. So, here uh, you can see the limited humanization and here is a full domain uh, humanization. Fine scale humanization of specific amino acid residues can be performed in isolation if they have known biochemical differences from mouse to human or if only a small number of residues need to be altered to achieve a human protein sequence. Specific domain or exons can be humanized if for example, they are known to be critical for human disease. So, here is the example of translated protein products uh, uh, given. The option 2 is the full uh, humanization. You have here the mouse gene of uh, interest and then you have the start and the stop codon and uh, this is the protein and you can see here it has been uh, fully humanized. So, full humanization involves humanizing the whole gene including introns to attain translation of the full human protein uh, potentially including human specific splicing patterns and for maximum translational potential 5 prime and 3 prime UTRs promoters and other regulatory sequences uh, can be included on a case by case basis. If understanding of gene regulation is the question at hand, if gene clusters are to be uh, humanized or if pathogenic mutations fall within such uh, flanking uh, regions. Uh, for more uh, information on this on this partial and full humanization, uh, you can uh, refer to this paper by Ju et al. in uh, Nature uh, Communications. Let us now study about the targeted genomic humanization uh, technologies, where uh, we have homologous recombination in uh, embryonic stem cells or recombinase mediated cassette exchange in embryonic stem cells, then CRISPR-Cas9 assisted homologous recombination using short or long SSODN donors in zygotes, then CRISPR-Cas9 assisted homologous recombination via SSODN mediated end joining uh, in, in zygotes. Here we are showing a picture of uh, homologous recombination uh, in uh, ES cells and uh, this has been used to humanize loci up to around uh, 200 kb and beyond. Uh, using iterative uh, targeting. A plasmid or uh, back targeting uh, vector carrying uh, human sequence flanked by homology arms is transferred into ES cells by uh, electroporation. Addition of Cas9 single guide RNA generating a targeted double strand break increases the HR efficiency. An antibiotic resistance selectable marker is included to enrich for ES cells harboring the desired uh, recombination. Selection cassettes are commonly flanked by FRT sites for later excision by FLP recombinations. 
uh, leaving a single FRT recombination uh, uh, genetics uh, genomics car. Uh, in method B, uh, where we use recombinase mediated exchange uh, cassettes uh, to humanize up to around 200 uh, kilobits loci. Here, a landing pad is uh, first uh, inserted uh, at the locus, target locus uh, via HR, uh, consisting of a selection cassette flanked by heterotypic lock sites. Uh, the same lock sites are inserted either side of the orthologous human locus uh, within a back vector which when electroported into landing pad harboring ES cells will recombine in the presence of a creochromenase. Cas9 single guide RNA pairs can subsequently be utilized to delete the mouse locus as an alternative to FLP FRT recombination. Uh, selection cassettes and other exogenous sequences can be flanked by piggyback inverted terminal repeats which when inserted at an AATT recognition site leave no genomic scar once excised with uh, piggyback uh, transposes. Piggyback transposition is less efficient than FLP FRT recombination. Thus, positive negative selection cassettes uh, such as HPRT or Puro del TK are uh, used. In the third method, we use CRISPR Cas9 assisted homologous recombination using uh, short or long uh, SSODN. Uh, here, introducing pathogenic mutation into humanized alleles uh, can be achieved by homologous recombination in zygotes using a SSODN about 150 base pairs in size donor templates. Uh, combined with a locus specific Cas9 SZRNA where no selection is uh, required. A similar strategy can be used for small scale humanization process uh, using a long SSODN as a donor template and a pair of uh, Cas9 single guide RNAs. Uh, in the fourth method, we use CRISPR Cas9 assisted HR via SSODN mediated and joining in zygotes. Uh, here, knocking off large inserts up to 200 kb in both mouse and rat zygotes has been achieved by combining Cas9 single guide RNAs and short SSODN donors with hybrid homology at the breakpoints between donor and target site to facilitate the homologous uh, recombination. So, overall, uh, let us have a look on the timeline for the first applications of uh, engineered nucleus technologies in laboratory animals. Uh, the first time points when studies that describe the first application of gene finger nucleases, uh, transcription activator like effector nucleases, talon and clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeat uh, CRISPR system including CRISPR from uh, Privotella and uh, Francisella 1, uh, CPF 1 and uh, Cas9 for genome editing in various laboratory animals uh, are shown in this uh, timeline. So, you can see here uh, in, in the development of the uh, Jadofen technologies in early 2000, uh, middle of 2009, uh, Gwartz et al. has applied these in rat, uh, followed by Mayer et al. in 2010 in mouse and uh, White et al. in 2011 in pig and uh, rabbit by uh, Fisikowska et al. In, in June the same year. And as late as uh, 2016, uh, ZFN technology uh, continues to be uh, popular and Sato et al. developed uh, 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 monkey, uh, it is, uh, monkeys using uh, ZFN uh, technologies. And you can see that uh, onset of uh, talent is uh, uh, somewhere in uh, 2011, uh, where uh, Tesson et al. used these uh, technology uh, for uh, rat, and then uh, Carlson et al. used it in 2012 in a pig, followed by Sang et al. in mouse 2013, and Song et al. in rabbit the same year, and uh, in monkey by uh, Liu et al. in 2014. 
but uh, with time uh, these two uh, technologies uh, are now uh, slowly uh, losing their uh, popularity. Uh, Talent uh, of course continues to have certain specific uh, interest groups and uh, advantages for which it is being still pursued. Uh, JLFN uh, seems to have slowed down uh, drastically. And uh, what has uh, become popular today uh, is the CRISPR Cas9 and uh, say other like uh, CRISPR CPF1 uh, technologies as well as uh, uh, DCAS9 uh, base editors uh, in the uh, development of uh, animal uh, models as well as other experimental methods and also including humanization of uh, mice uh, models. Uh, the first application of uh, CRISPR-Cas9 for engineering animals was uh, used by Wang et al in mouse in uh, 2013 followed by Lee et al uh, in rat uh, in 2013 and also by Lee and Q and uh, in rabbit by uh, Yang et al in 2014 and the same year uh, monkey and pig it was also used uh, for developing uh, the engineering of the particular uh, animal genomes and then uh, it has been also used in dog by Zhao et al and uh, of course uh, once again uh, by Kim et al in 2016 uh, they have used this technology for engineering certain traits in uh, mouse. Uh, before we end, uh, we need to uh, uh, focus on uh, certain things. Uh, for example, animal models are not the exact replicas of human disease uh, models we have to remember. They have many advantages and as well as uh, many uh, disadvantages. Uh, they are at the best uh, human surrogates of uh, human uh, disease model. Uh, the European uh, uh, directive uh, has set the regulatory framework for all animal uh, research and scientists have recognized for decades the importance of giving full consideration to three fundamental principles which have become the backbone of this uh, European directive. Uh, number one is animals must not be used uh, whenever other non-animal based experimental approaches are available with similar relevance and reliability. Uh, we know that uh, the genome engineering and editing technology has huge potential for developing uh, animal models which can in future almost uh, become like uh, humans or like humanized uh, counterparts. Uh, but uh, even with technological advances, if we have other non-animal based models available, we should not opt for uh, animal uh, models. Secondly, the number of animals used must be adjusted to the minimum needed to reach a conclusion. In the advantages of small animals, we have highlighted that because of bigger litter sizes in, 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 in rats and mice and some of the other animals. Uh, we, we can get uh, statistically relevant uh, uh, data, uh, but uh, that does not mean that we will be using large number of animals. Uh, we have to restrict the number of animals to be used. Uh, if at all, we have to go for animal uh, experimentation uh, to, to look for uh, new knowledge and uh, new therapies. The third point is all provisions must be taken uh, throughout the procedures to minimize any harm inflicted uh, to the animals. Uh, we should not indulge in any kind of uh, cruelty except uh, for the predefined approved uh, procedures uh, by the animal uh, ethics uh, uh, committee. So, these three principles uh, need to be kept uh, all the time in you know, a, a researcher's mind. And, and to respect the animals uh, because uh, otherwise it will be a violation of a set of uh, ethics or regulatory framework guidelines uh, which have been recognized by scientists for 
uh, many decades. These principles uh, in brief uh, known as the 3 R rules uh, stands for uh, replacement. Uh, if you have a alternative model for a uh, in, instead of a animal disease model, uh, we should replace it with the non-animal model. Second one is reduction. Do not use excessive number of animals, use the minimal number of animals with which you get a good quality data uh, for uh, your studies. And the third one is uh, refinement. And these have become the standard to which every project involving the use of uh, animal is uh, evaluated. Uh, with this, we come to end of this uh, lecture on animal models. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.